maneuvering and discipline formation, and effectively charging with bayonets. Good morning from Tales of Terra. Good morning. Another day. Another adventure. And today's adventure is Valley Forge. It is an iconic place for the American War with the British. Uh, this is the place that they have settled in and regrouped and fought for five long years before America could declare its independence. What happened here at Valley Forge? On April 19, 1775, in Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts, civilian soldiers banded together to battle and oppose British tyranny and oppressive rule. Baron Friedrich Vietnam August Heinrich Ferdinand von Steuben. Never before or since have I had such an impression of the ancient fabled god of war. He seems to me a perfect personification of Mars. Von Schoen's impression of the Continental Army is not fake. With regard to the military discipline, I can safely say that no such thing exists. The Continental Army is composed of more than 75 regiments from 11 states, each with different training. Von Schoen recognizes that the Army requires standardized training additional drilling and improved discipline to more effectively combat the British. The American Army endured crushing defeats for most of the first two years of the war. Soldiers, women, and children of all ages, fatigued from recent battles, marched into Valley Forge on December 19, 1777. The encampment at Valley Forge offers much needed time for the Army to regroup and trained during the winter of 1777 and 78. But the future survival of the Continental Army is uncertain. Soldiers lacked proper clothing, had little food, and endured widespread diseases. Smallpox also plagued the Continental Army, killing one-third of those infected. Smallpox is more destructive to an army in a natural way the enemy's sword. Washington orders inoculations against smallpox. It is one of the first mass immunization programs in history. Its success fortifies the army for the remainder of the war. Following a long, difficult campaign, the army arrived at Valley Forge on December 19, 1777. The Continental Army faced these challenges with a tenacity and determination that remain familiar American values we know today. General George Washington and Inspector General Frederick Wilhelm von Steuben transformed the disparate group of soldiers that marched into Valley Forge into a united force. We say to our soldiers, this and he does it. But I am obliged to say to the American, this is the reason why you ought to do that, and then he does it. Translators carefully record each drill. Von Steuben later publishes his drills and standardized training in a manual known as the Blue Book. Soon, the Army is executing drills with precision, loading and firing muskets, maneuvering in disciplined formation and effectively charging with bayonets. The Continental Army continued to overcome challenges in the final years of the Revolutionary War. The war raged on for another five years and the Army prepared by experiences at Valley Forge endured another five encampments. The siege at Yorktown in late September 1781 marked the beginning of the end of the British troops. 
as the Continental Army forced the surrender of General Cornwall's and his 8,000 troops, Britain and United States signed a final peace treaty in Paris on September 3rd, 1783. After eight years, the United States claimed its independence and the world witnessed the birth of a new nation. So that's why it is very important to know the American history and it is all started here. And this is not too far away from Washington DC and it's not that far away from New York, it's not that far away from uh, the East Coast. As we walk around, we will see the remnants of tools that the medics and the doctors had treated and, and wounded soldiers. I've been here approximately 30 years ago, uh, but I still remember the scenes vividly. The saws and cutting knives and etc. Let's see what we will find along our route. Anthony Wayne, Colonel Chester, Italian of Minute Men, July 21st, 1775. The resolve unanimously that the thanks of the Congress be presented to Brig General Wayne for his brave, prudent, and soldierly conduct in this spirit and well-conducted attack on Stony Point. Gold medal, emblematical of this action, be struck and presented to Brig General Wayne, Major General and Commander-in-Chief United States Army, March 5th, 1792. In January, a small congressional delegation inspects the camp and witnesses the Army's deprivations firsthand. Some in Congress have labeled Washington a tyrant and have questioned his ability to command. The visiting delegation finds Washington to be a calm, decisive leader. Ultimately, Congress supports Washington's requests and adopts his recommendations, including the appointment of Nathaniel Green as the new Quartermaster General. Green immediately begins overhauling the supply chain, increasing deliveries of food and equipment to camp. George Washington reorganized the medical system, calling for the construction of a permanent hospital. The Yellow Springs Hospital played a key role in this legacy. We are at George Washington's headquarters at Valley Forge. Washington had chosen this place is because it was not too far away from Philadelphia, but far enough so that there would not be any surprise attacks. The area had water, wood, and, and it was hilly. Therefore, it was conducive to be protected much easier. Congress also establishes military alliances with the Tuscarora, Delaware, Stockbridge Mohicans, and Oneida tribes. A delegation of 47 Oneida warriors arrives to support Washington's army. According to oral tradition, the Oneida bring valuable corn for the encampment. Nearby, at Barren Hill, British forces move into position in an attempt to capture 2,000 Continental soldiers out on a patrol led by General Lafayette. To allow time for the Continentals to escape, Oneida warriors and French volunteers ambush the British. Six Oneida warriors are killed, and two are captured in the skirmish. Their valiant efforts. 
Green, yeah. water, blue skies, and it's so peaceful now. I cannot imagine in the 1700s where people were suffering mm -hmm. and fighting I'm for sure. their independence. Yeah, no independence come free. Oh, no, that yeah. Yeah. All the nations on earth who claim to be free and sovereign have paid the price. Who so. owned and lived in the building when Washington arrived? So the rock house that we're going to visit a moment later is the house that was not built for Washington. It was here before he arrived. The house was built for Isaac Potts, an iron master who was one of the owner of the Valley Forge. At that time of the winter uh, encampment in 1777, he was not living there, but had rented it to its aunt, Deborah Hughes. This was a relatively new dwelling built sometimes between 1768 and 1770. General Washington felt strongly that the American army should hold themselves to a high standard. Unlike the common European practice, the American military general did not forcibly seize property. The Continental Army paid Isaac Pot 100 pounds in Pennsylvania currency for the use of the house. Relative to the times, this was probably a fair amount. Just upstream is the site of the Valley Forge, for which this area was named. The Continental Army used the forge to store foods and weapons. Three months before the winter encampment, the British swept through on September 18, 1777, and burnt the forge and the other buildings. General Washington, his army, and its followers faced five more years of war, and even harsher winter encampments. My heart bled at the recital of their sufferings the past winter. Exalted virtue and patriotism, and the strong attachment of the officers to General Washington only held the army together. Okay, so you're at Washington's headquarters, so the house really is the house. We're looking at maybe 70 to 80 percent encampment era, so it, it is the real McCoy. Furnishings, most of it is reproduction. Um, right now, we only have the first floor open, so you can see the aides office. That's where folks like Alexander Hamilton, John Lawrence, Tench Toman, James er, um, McHenry, um, they all worked in that office, and then Washington worked in the back office. Off to have been here during the encampment, and they were probably about the yeah. Americans of the Revolutionary Era looked to ancient Rome and Greece as models of Republican ideals. This statue, bronze copy of the original marble, which, which has stood in the rotunda of the Virginia State Capitol since 1796, includes both classical and also American symbols that would have been familiar to Americans of the time. George Washington is depicted as a modern Cincinnatus, the Roman farmer and general who left his farm to save the Roman Republic and then voluntarily returned to his plot. The father of our country wears his military uniform but carries a civilian walking stick rather than his sword, which has been set aside. The stand by a farmer's plowshare, a symbol of his love of peace and agriculture. He rests his hand on a bundle of rods called a fasces, a Roman symbol of civil authority. Here the 13th rod represents the joining of the original states and the strength gained from that unity. 